Hi everybody, Dr. Charlton here again. I'm gonna do some review from last week and, and hopefully help improve your knowledge in this area. And then I'm also gonna add layer some new things in. So hopefully you can keep up and uh, um, hopefully I can do the best job to explain it in a way that's easily understandable. So first of all, I cleared out my environment with this broom. I cleared out my plots. I cleared out the console. So I've cleared out everything so I can have a, kind of have a fresh start. The only thing missing is I need to create a new R script so that I can go ahead and um, you know run some code. So I'm gonna use a new data set today that's again built into R. So I'm still using a built-in data set. But before I used MT cars, this time I'm using Iris. So first of all, if I just run this, it outputs the whole data set. So I can look at the whole data set and see what's going on with it. If I wanted to, I could just look at the head of the data set, like the first six rows, and just to see what it looks like. I can run a, the summary function, and it gives me like means and, and whatnot. So you can see, I now know that the mean sepal length is 5.8, and we have 50 setosas, 50 versicolors. And so now that as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing I don't really understand this data set that well still. So what I can do is I can run the help file. Look at the pop-up too. So the pop-up explains quite a bit about this uh, data set. But I'm gonna run the help file here and um, I get this whole explanation about the data set. This is, these are flowers, three different species of iris. And the question is whether, you know, there's relationships between all these different features of the flowers and, you know, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and if that varies by species. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a comment up here. So this is how I make a comment. This comment is not gonna be run as code. It, it can't be run because it's commented. And then I'm gonna say, look at the data. Okay, so that's an important step so that we kind of just understand our data set. Um, next, visualize the data. Okay, so for this step, what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna load ggplot2. Every time we use ggplot2 in a session, we're gonna go ahead and run this function. Now, if you don't have ggplot2 installed, you're gonna get an error. Um, there you go, not installed, run this code. That applies to all these uh, packages or libraries, if you wanna call them. If you don't have them, you're going to get errors when you try to run the functions within them because uh, we're going to now run a function of this, you know, basically a tool. We're using a tool that is in the ggplot2 library and it is called ggplot. So I want to make a quick ggplot to look at some relationships here. Um, first of all, I need to put the name of my data set, which is iris. And then I'm going to, um, you see the yellow pop-up. It gives me a clue here that first I put my data set, iris, that's there. Next, I want to do my AES functions, which is the, I call it aesthetics. I think that's what it stands for. But we're going to tell it what we want y to be, which is always our outcome variable. So y is always our super important thing that we're interested in. Um, it's our outcome. So I want to see if we can predict sepal length um, with um, petal length, see if there's a relationship. If I just run this, it just gives me kind of a blank chart. So I need to add some geomes. So I'm going to go geome point. Geome point gives me a dot plot, which is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do a geom. And so you can clearly see this relationship between sepal length and petal length that's linear. Now, if I do, um, if I add a um, geom smooth, and if I look in the, uh, 
Um, if I look in that yellow help box, you can see it gives me some clues about what kinds of things I, I can do and, and want to do. So that can be helpful. Um, in this case, I want to do method equals ln. So for a linear model, so it's going to draw a regression line. So there's where my regression line is. So you can see this is a, this line, it's sloping upward. So there is a positive relationship between pedal length and sepal length. And the fact that this standard error gray box around it is so tight and so narrow, that shows me that this is probably going to be a significant uh, relationship. Now, there's some interesting clustering here. You see this cluster down here, and then you have a whole totally different package up here. So I wonder if this relationship actually varies depending on some other variable. And I'm going to say maybe it varies depending on sepal length. No, not sepal length, species. Because maybe for one species of virus, the pedal length and sepal length are related in this one area, and, and but not so much for another. So I'm going to do, and again, I you know, we use the New Zealand spelling here. So, but I think it will run with or without the U on the color. So either way, but um, I'm going to go ahead and add a color. So now everything is colorized depending on what species it is. Now you see that. So that's what's going on with the clusters. Like this is this um, relationship between sepal length and petal length is different between each species. So we have these crazy clusters. And you can see like the biggest difference is the petal length for setosas is really short. So that was this cluster over here. That's why it was clustering back over here because they had the really short sepal length. But you can see it does vary across all of these species. So we've kind of visualized this data even before running a regression, we already kind of have some ideas of what we're gonna find when we do run a regression there is going to be a positive relationship here, right? So let's go ahead and um, test for statistically significant relationships. That's basically what we're doing here. So I want to do a, a linear model, and I want to see if I can predict sepal length based on and my data is going to be um, papyrus, right? So I can run that, and it, it quickly tells me there is a positive relationship. Not that, not the intercept. That's not useful. The pedal length, um, for every one unit, the pedal length goes up. So when it goes from two to three, um, sepal length goes up by 0 0.4089. So it goes up goes up like halfway. So over, we go over one and you go up almost half of one. Over one, up almost half of one. Over one, up. So that's the relationship, right? We don't know if that's statistically significant because we haven't um, extracted all of the information out of this model. Let's go ahead and save this model. Again, we've gotten the habit of calling these things model one, or model two, whatever. Let's call this uh, model one. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to call the summary function of model one so that I can see what all is going on under the hood here. And then I get all my statistical output. And I just want to highlight a few things really quick. Um, pedal length. There's my coefficient. There's my p-value. This uses uh, scientific notation again. So it's it's 2 times 10 to the negative 16 power. Basically, this is a really small number, okay? So it is significant, and it is a positive relationship, okay? So that kind of are the, is sort of the main things that we want to look at. Uh, next, we would also consider the R squared. So um, pedal length explains about 76% of what, are, what we would expect to see in the sepal length. And again, that is significant significant the p-value is less than 0.05 so that's pretty cool we saw the relationship we observed it here and now we actually know so we actually know um what the uh coefficient is going to be now but this coefficient depends on um 
if I go back here, it depends on not having it separated by species. So I deleted the species thing for color. And so this um, coefficient here, 0 0.40892, that's this line, all right? So we've been able to calculate that out. Um, and then let's see. So what's next? Um, next, I want to consider if there's a binary outcome variable. So let's imagine a scenario where we want to predict um, species based on um, some attribute like sepal length. You could see, you could very easily predict uh, this cluster based on their petal length because it's so separated out. So if petal length is like two or less, then you know it's this species. I think it was Setosa maybe. Um, so you could see, you could predict that, but in order to do that, we're gonna use a tool called logistic regression. But first let's go ahead and visualize the data. So I'm gonna do, logistic regression, which is really cool, really powerful tool. Um, and it's used to predict cool things like whether um, somebody is at risk for dying from some disease, whether somebody is a terrorist risk. So you can, whether somebody's a good credit risk, uh, logistic regression is used for a lot of things. It's a lot like regular regression, but I'm going to go ahead and um, do another plot where I'm going to pull in iris and I'm going to um, look at and see if um, why is the species so if my outcome variable is species and how does my petal length you can see down here uh, species kind of the petal link kind of does predict species. So if all these are, I think it was Setosa or something. So it'll be interesting to see. Let's go ahead and run that though and we'll see what we find. So why is species? So I wanna, I'm trying to predict what species of virus it is. And I, all I know is the petal link, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a geome um, point so that I can get my, my dot plot. I'm gonna go ahead and run that. Wow, so you can see it does separate out by species. Um, these points are kind of laid over each other really thick. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to actually um, make it semi-transparent by changing the alpha level. And then I'm gonna run this again. So that way you can kind of see where these values are clustering. So if it's darker, that means it's a whole bunch stacked on top of each other. Um, whereas before, you couldn't really see if things were stacked. Um, so we have these three. Now we could run um, we could run our same uh, like geom. Oops, that didn't work. We could run our same um, geom smooth type thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't want to really do that because we have um, this binary outcome variable. So let's consider what else we can do. Um, and let's, first of all, does it make, would it make sense to draw a regression line through all three of these? It kind of doesn't because this is not a continuous variable. These are three different species. So if you have the relationship between petal length and three different species, it's kind of meaningless. Now, if you have the relationship between virginica versus petal length, like what's the probability that it's virginica, that actually does make more sense or the probability that it's setosa. So, so you have to look at these individually, right? Like I can tell you the relationship between setosa and petal length. I can tell you the relationship between versicolor and petal length, but I can't like consider this as one continuous outcome variable. I really can't. So what I want to do is, um,
Oops, that didn't work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new variable that's gonna just tell me if it's Virginica or not. So I have the Iris data set. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save my changes in a data set called Iris2. And so you can see like all the stuff I'm doing is gonna be actually in order to use some of these functions because I'm manipulating this data. Um, and so in but in order to manipulate this data how I want, I need to use a package called tidyverse. And it actually installs a whole bunch of packages. note for you if you don't have it install it okay um, and if you don't have it you'll know you'll get an error so I want to create a new variable so the way I do that I use the mutate function and I'm giving you this this stuff as far as like transforming these variables and transforming the data set because this is something that you don't really need to do you're gonna be running regressions and create visualizing data, like using these models. But as far as like transforming your data and stuff like that, I'm gonna do that for you. Just to, cause this is not an advanced stats class and there's only so far we can take this. All right, so I'm gonna create a new variable. It's called first the color. And I'm gonna use the if else function to kind of um, assign it. So, so it's kind of like if, um, species equals Virginica, then it's going to be a one. If it doesn't, if it's one of these others, it's going to be a zero. All right. So if, and actually, um, equals equals, there's the color, then one, if not zero. Okay. So I've created a new variable. Let's see if this works. If not, I'll troubleshoot my code. All right, so I have iris2 here. Um, I have six variables. I can click on this to visualize my data, right, in a, up here. So this runs the view function so that I can see it in this kind of separate window. So let's see, versicolor 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1. You see that it matches up, right, and then this these virginicas down here, those are zero. So only if species is vers versicolor do I have um, a one there. So that's perfect. So that worked great. Um, so yeah, so I have my data set. Next thing is I wanna see if I can um, plot this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plot it again. So I'm gonna do a ggplot. I'm going to do iris data set is y equals and y is vertical color, which is my new variable that I just created. So, so species, some of the species had three different levels, virginica, versicolor, color, and setosa. I created a new variable that's called versicolor. color. The only, it, it's a one, if species equals versicolor, color, then my versicolor color variable is a one okay so this so it's confusing right because versicolor not only is it a value of species but it's also its own variable name that's most evident if i look here at the total data set you can see if i scroll through species i see these versicolors here but i also create a new column called versicolor that is a one every time so try not try to keep that straight hopefully that explanation works for you um so my really important outcome that i want is is to predict if the species is gonna be versicolor. And I wanna predict it based on uh, petal length. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add a GM point on that. Oops, I think I need to make sure I run the iris too. Um, because I was just running iris where I created this new ob object that has this new variable. Um, but iris still doesn't have that new variable that I added. So I want to make sure 
that I'm running Iris to. So let me try again. Okay, so Versicolor, that's interesting, right? So it's either, um, so the ones, that means it is Versicolor, and then the zeros means it's not. So it's interesting because it's split between these two uh, other variables, right? So, so yeah. So what I want to do is, um, I mean, this puts me in a tricky situation because I was going to do a logistic regression, or sorry, show you the probability slope between this. Um, but let me... All right, so I think what I've decided to do is I'm going to discard Virginica. So I want to have, I want to be able to have a nice, clean regression line between two, um, two variables. And you can see, like, my line here is kind of weird. Um, and I don't have a logistic regression model doesn't exactly work for this type of scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to, just to be able to use the tool that we're planning to use today and to not make things too complicated, I am going to go back up to here where I created Iris 2. I'm going to add another row and I'm going to create a filter where I um, eliminate, um, what's it called, Virginica. Does not equal so then I'm going to run this again, and then I'm going to run this again, my plot again. You can see I deleted those Virginicas out here, and so now I have something that you could imagine a regression line being drawn through this. So let me see if it will let me do that. Um... Okay, so it did draw a regression line, but you can see one of the things that I want to try to explain here, and this is a kind of a tricky concept, but logistic regression is a little bit different than a typical regression because it's not, you don't really have, this straight line here doesn't really exist, right? Because if you start at zero and you end at one, so this is 0% chance, that it's so down here over here we have a zero percent chance that that it's um that it's going to be versicolor and then up here it goes to like a hundred percent right so it's really what you're what you want is like a probability like kind of s curve and not a straight line okay so you're really interested in the probability that like how likely is it that will have versicolor given a specific sepal length. So at two, it might be like 1% and then 5%, and then it might shoot up and be like 80% when you get to three and 99% when you get to five. Okay, and this is, this is um, something that a straight line linear regression isn't completely suited to. So, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to I'm going to delete this geom smooth like this um this line linear line right here and I'm going to actually um uh create a probability line so that you can kind of see um what I'm talking about in terms of this this probability slope. And I do not have all this stuff memorized, but I printed it out and I'm typing this line here. Well, most everything that I've shown you, I pretty much can do off the top of my head. But this line here, I am referring to my notes and typing it out. I encourage you to do the same. It's hard to remember some of this code in Snipes when you can look it up and find it on the internet somewhere, what have you. So hopefully it'll run just like it ran earlier when I tried it. Okay. Okay, 
So there's like actually too much separation between these two variables because it's like basically when you get down to these low sepal lengths, it's like a hundred percent chance that you're gonna have um, that you're gonna have not versicolor. And if you get up here, it's a hundred percent chance that you do. So let's actually do two species that overlap a little bit. So we're gonna do um, let's let's filter out. Um, set, Tosa, I think that way we have because remember how Versicolor and Virginica kind of overlapped and so let's try that and see what that looks like okay so now you have a probability curve so up here these ones are all Versicolor so if they're one they're Versicolor right if they're zero then they are um, Virginica because I filtered out all the setosas. So remember the setosas were over here on two, they're all gone because of my new filter that I that I tweaked. So this is what I want to show you, this kind of probability curve. So you can't really do a straight line. What you have is a slope of a probability that kind of approaches 100%. The lower the sepal length in this case, it approaches 100%. The higher the sepal length, it approaches 0%. So this is not a, an appropriate situation for a linear regression. So we're gonna use a tool called a logistic regression because it allows us to fit this kind of line to a graph, okay? So we can't use a just a typical linear model to do this kind of line. So what this model does, the logistic regression, is it transforms our um, outcome variable so that it's a probability. So instead of, uh, so actually, I'm going to create some labels here so that you can, so that it's more descriptive of what's actually going on. So my Y label, I want it to be um, probability. And that's what this, oops. what did I, so I made a mistake here. Probability y equals, I had my quote marks in the wrong place. All right, y is the probability that it's versicolor. All right, so so this is the probability that we have versicolor, okay? So if our sepal length is like five, then, and I take that straight up, the probability that it's versicolor is about 20%, right? If um, petal length is three, then the probability of, of it being versicolor is about 100%, okay? So I'm talking about this blue line. This is our blue regression line, logistic regression line that we fitted to our model, okay? So now we're not linear anymore, we're logistic, but this is something that you always have to use if your outcome variable is not continuous. So my outcome variable is not a continuous, it's like, I either have versicolor species or I don't, okay? So it's it's categorical. So you do have to use logistic regression. Now you can have categorical variables as predictors and you don't have to use this kind of model. You only have to use this kind of model for when your outcome variable is categorical in this way. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add um, a title. Well, so this is gonna be, um, Probability of versicolor species. If I add a backslash n to my title, you notice I put all this text, like all the text goes in quotes. And if it's a function or a number, it's not in quotes. Um, so that's just try to sort of remember that pattern. Um, given. So that way I just created a little line break there so that it's on two different lines instead of being this huge title. Probability of versicolor species given petal length. Okay, so this is something that we cannot use a regular regression on, like I said. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do our um, run our logistic regression. I'll show you how to do that. So first of all, before we were using the LM function to do the linear model regular regression, now we're using GLM, which stands for generalized linear model. Um, I'm going to use the same 
do a lot of the same stuff. So I'm going to drop my data set name in there, which is, sorry, that's after. First of all, I'm going to start with my outcome variable that I really am interested in, which is whether or not this is going to be the versicolor species. I want to predict whether or not I'm going to have versicolor based on the length variable. And my data is going to be um, parts two. And then I need to add one more argument because it is a logistic regression. So family equals binomial. So that's just saying that the, there's kind of a, a binary outcome variable. It could be one or it could be zero. And so you're basically predicting probabilities. So that's just basically the syntax you use for logistic regression. So I added the G and then I added this um, this uh, argument to my function. All right, so that's all I need. I can run that and I, I get my output here. But remember in the past, we were saving our model. So I'm gonna save it as model one and then I can run summary function on the model one to get actually more output. Um, not just this limited output you see here, but all the data that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. So I saved that as model one. All this stuff is now saved as model one because I ran this whole row. When I click anywhere on this row and run it, it runs that whole row. Okay, now I'm gonna do a summary of the model. Take a look at it, make this a little bigger so we can see. All right, so. My petal length is minus, uh, my, sorry, for every one unit increase in petal length, the, um, my probability of versicolor goes down by, by nine. Now, the interesting thing is, um, because we're doing logistic regression, it's not, what gets confusing is the outcome variable. So this is actually the log odds, okay? So I'm trying to see, I'm, I'm basically trying to see what, how this changes, you know, how, I'm basically trying to see what does this line do? So it's not as straightforward the interpretation because this is like the log odds, so right? So there's a nine unit negative change in the log odds, okay? Um, so, um, I encourage you, if you don't remember, if you don't know logistic regression from your stats classes that you've taken, I encourage you to watch a video or two on YouTube about it to try to brush up. Um, but this is how you do a logistic regression and which is my main focus is just showing you how, how we actually do it. Um, so I'm gonna show you something really quick about the difference between linear regression and uh, logistic regression. So check out this formula. So this is a linear regression. Y is predicted by the, you know, this is the intercept B0 plus the coefficient, the first coefficient uh, B1 times X1 um, and the second coefficient, b2 times x2. So this is like multiple regression. So you have multiple uh, predictors all the way out to k. Um, so this is a straightforward regression. The way we were doing it, we were uh, doing a y hat, which means that y is expected to be this, this number. So if you don't have the hat, you should really have an error term out here, which they don't have. That's fine. Um, so, but we know that's there. So here's a logistic regression. You can see rather than predicting the outcome variable, you're trying to use all of your same stuff, your same model, everything the same, same, to predict the natural log of the probability of getting our outcome divided by one minus the probability of getting the outcome. So that's the model that we have to do in order to graph, create this, create a model that will track this probability curve. Okay. So that's how that works. Um, I'm not going to go deep, deep, deep into this, but just recognize that 
your outcome variable in logistic regression is transformed in this way here. So everything else is the same, same, but in logistic regression, it's, you know, it's, you're dealing with probabilities. And so rather than seeing what's the linear change in this variable, so that, that can make it a bit different. Okay. So let's go back in our studio and um, just, let's just, Do a quick uh, review kind of run through type thing so here's all the code that i've run during this session hopefully that will be helpful for you to include this um, i have shown you how rather than doing a linear regression we graph this probability in the case of a logistic regression um, logistic regression is important because a lot of times we have an outcome that's not numerical from one to a million or one to infinity or negative infinity to positive infinity would be super convenient for a linear regression. But actually we have an outcome that is, it is either is or it isn't. It's heads or it's not. It's tails or it's not. It's a terrorist or it's not. It's the person died on the Titanic or they didn't. And so that's the kind of outcome that we have. So we have to use a different model. And so today I've gone through and explained that to you and yeah let me know what questions you have and thanks for listening and um good luck on on um, getting this all figured out i will include the code and make it easy for you to get that thanks